Okay, good evening. At 6.30, we call the order meeting number 1851 of the East Windsor Planning and Zoning Commission. We are live at Scout Hall, as well as via the Zoom media platform. We have a quorum. We have uh, four regular members, as well as one alternate. So, Frank, I'm going to ask you to end tonight on any uh, votes that may take place. Thank you. Under added agenda items, we have one. There's going to be a discussion on uh, 137 Scantic on a subdivision. Public participation. I'm sorry, legal notice. So there is a legal notice. The East Windsor Planning and Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, May 23rd, 2023 at 6.30. Details regarding how to attend will be published on the commission's agenda and will be made available on the town's website. It's PZ 2023-14. The applicant is Town of East Windsor is requesting a text amendment to zoning regulations section 601.2 and 900.3. Full copy of the application is available on the Planning and Zoning Commission's webpage of the town's website. All interested persons may attend this meeting and provide verbal or written comments regarding this application. This was published in the Journal Inquirer on May 12th, 2023, and May 19th, 2020. Okay, now we are at the public participation portion of our meeting. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak on any topic that is not on tonight's agenda? Okay, hearing none, is there anyone online that would like to speak on any topic that is not on tonight's agenda? Okay, hearing none, we will continue through approval of minutes. We have the minutes of May 9th, 2023, regular meeting minutes. Does anyone have any questions, comments, alterations, amendments, changes? Okay, if nobody has any comments, then uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes. I make a motion we approve meeting minutes from number 191850, dated Tuesday, May 9th, 2023, as presented. There's a motion on the table to approve the minutes. Is there a second? Second. Second by Dave. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay, and the receipt of applications. We have two applications to receive tonight. We have PZ 2023-17, text amendment proposing text changes to zoning regulations section 502, permitted accessory uses. Use table B1, B2, M1, HIZ, and TZ5 zone. We also have application PZ 2023, Dash 18, Town of East Windsor text amendment, text change to zoning regulations, sections 405, temporary events. Both of these will be heard at a later meeting. We have nothing under performance bonds or actions, no continued public hearings. So we now have a new public hearing. It's PZ 2023-14. Town of East Windsor text amendment for a text change to zoning regulation section 601.2, number of parking spaces, and section 900.3, site plan modification. The applicant is the Town of East Windsor. These changes are being uh, recommended um, in the lieu or in light of a recent request for request for clarification on the use of millings asphalt millings in the place of bituminous concrete. So we wanted to clarify the regulations. And the, um, if you have a, a newer version, I added um, based on comments um, 
an additional requirement down below. But what we've changed is uh, all parking spaces, loading facilities, and access roadways shall be paved with bituminous asphalt or bituminous concrete to provide an adequate all weather service. Just to be clear, so that the definition of an adequate all weather service doesn't get um, misinterpreted uh, there. And then we wanted to say we would allow um, the use of a pervious pavement, such as a, a milling by way of a special permit with conditions. And those conditions are outlined down under L1 through six, um, where we have the first 25 feet of the site access drive, be paved with bituminous asphalt or bituminous concrete that the design has provided adequate protection from sedimentation um, and to meet the criteria of 601.6 and 604.2. A maintenance plan has been prepared to show how the site will be maintained, including striping for site circulation and parking, snow removal, dust mitigation, anti-tracking measures, and maintenance of on-site drainage structure as applicable. Um, we've added in that all ADA required parking areas and walkways shall be constructed with bituminous concrete. And then we had um, uh, a requirement for a statement be included on the plans that it should the use change, you may require be required to come in uh, for a reassessment as to whether meals are appropriate and the uses. Um, where you could use the millings would be limited to, and we have a list of warehousing and distribution of non-hazardous materials, contractors, office and storage yard, volume reduction facilities, composting, mulching, and wood chipping facilities, inventory holding areas, commercial recreation, farm and agriculture. Um, I did get some feedback from the building official who felt that the warehousing and distribution use may not lend itself to millings. So I wanted to share that on the okay. um, does anybody have any comments they'd like to make? No, I think this kind of closes up a loophole, but um, I, I agree with the building official warehouse and distribution. Probably not a place for millings. Contract for storage, yes. Urban list, yes. Farm, obviously. So, how do we take that out? Right. Just, this line, okay. the line, line on. I think I'm looking at it in our, uh, in our motion. And I just want to say, I think one of the reasons we included it is because of the project, the address is escaping me, that we just approved. Just, just the last meeting. Because yeah. oh, that um, is a non paved property. I think that's why it went in. Um, I'm not saying change the approach. I just I think that's why it was included because we were talking about it at the same time. Well, is there is there a provision in here that anyone else could petition under under the special use permit? If they feel that they you know that they have the uh, the right fit for such a uh, change. So I mean, these, these are the ones that you know can be approved at staff level, and if anybody wants to petition the commission for an, an alternate use, they have the right to. We'll do it. Yeah. So add a seven. Add a number seven. All all other uses. Yeah, how we want to word this would require a, a hearing in front of the commission or something like that. It would require approval of the, of the commission. So I have other uses, other 
excuses not included in number six above <clears throat> may be petitioned to the commission by way of a special use permit. Okay. Well, use of what? Well, number six? Or you say you're going to publish yeah. number seven. Are, are the excuses not listed in number six? Maybe petition. Well, the so the number one is re, is by special permit. It's those are coming in on, as a special permit. Okay, so it, there's nothing that can be approved at staff level. All of it's right because be this is effectively a waiver, okay. and right. we can't. I mean, I just just think that how can we put something in so if somebody reads and say my use isn't here. They still feel that they're a right fit. Um, well, how about we just say we just strike the by way of a special use permit, so it's not circular. Okay. But number seven, other uses not included in number six, may be petitioned to the commission. Are you guys in agreement with that? Makes sense. Mike. You want to hear it? So for number wants to petition, any use not specified. You mean? Yeah. I think if you're going to do that, then I would just take the list of uses right out and just say special perm that the an, an applicant can make a request but by a special permit demonstrating the following criteria and just don't tie it to a use because if if it's if we're not going to limit it to the uses listed and mm -hmm. someone else can petition, then right. It really just comes down when we were talking about this. The reason I put those in there, frankly, was just because you want to weed out someone coming to you saying, I want to, I, I don't want to pay because I've determined it's too expensive yep. because that's what will happen. And so you have right. to be willing so to tell them no if we don't there, put a list. Happen, then they would still have an avenue by going to the zoning board of appeals then? They would need to demonstrate hardship and it can't be financial. Well, okay. Yeah. That's what yeah. I heard that. that's what I'm they come in by way of a special permit and they don't get approved by the commission, then they would have to appeal to Superior Court. But I, I understand Mike's yeah. point that you know we don't want every single applicant trying this avenue just to keep it you know lower cost. So um and the initial criteria one, two, and three really comes from kind of how they do it closer to the shoreline where they do they are more open to non-paved areas because of drainage and flood zone. I, I um, as the person without a vote, my suggestion would be not to overthink the initial version. Right number seven and let it go as it is. I mean, you're giving up a significant, you're giving significant flexibility to several uses by even entertaining, not allowing it be paid, not making it to be paid. And it's been on the books for how many years as it is now? That is. You guys in agreement with that? No number seven. No number seven. Are we striking the warehousing or not? Um, I, I, my opinion is I would, especially the building officials not supportive of it either. And my opinion is warehousing tends to lead to uh, forklift traffic, heavier load, heavier turning equipment may, uh, may not be very conducive to this type of noise. Anybody else has a, uh, an opinion on it? My only concern is what type of warehouse it's hooked together. Stone core, you have a new guy that comes in that deals in heavy rocks and bricks. They're going to use a mop that flip tires that may just tear up that pavement where you have a milling. It's easier for the owner to repair it, maintain it, than it is to have perfectly smooth pavement and he's going to tear it up, patch it. That sounds to me more like it's an inventory holding it than a warehouse. Would you, like yeah. uh, Merwin Mason would be considered inventory holding instead of warehousing? Could, could be. Currently, Mason. in our regulations, the inventory hold, holding is defined as the automobile. Automobile. Okay. So, those, well, so then mulch is the only, but like gravel, we did talk about the volume reduction, which then that you now concrete and mm -hmm. all the other products there too. Um, either. I, I guess 
I did see both yeah, any, Anyone, both anything that comes before us, we, we can we'll have to be reviewed anyway. Right. Okay. Leaving it? Leave it alone, as it says written. Okay. Any other discussion? So this is a public hearing. Is there anyone in the audience that'd like to comment on this application? Is there anyone online that'd like to comment on this application? Okay. So nobody has any other questions. I entertain a motion to close the public hearing. I make a motion to close the public hearing on CZ 2023-14, Town of East Windsor Text Amendment, where text change and zoning regulations, section 201-2, number of parking spaces, and section 900.3, site plan modification, applicant Town of East Windsor. We have a motion to close the public hearing on the table. Is there a second? Second. Second by Dave. Any other discussions? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Unanimous public hearing is closed. Right. Uh, do we feel comfortable? We have enough information to, to make a vote on this? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> then I'll uh, entertain a motion to approve. Make a motion to approve the text amendment to section 601-2 parking lot design and 900-3 site plan application of the East Windsor zoning regulations as detailed in application CZ 2023-14 of the town of East Windsor last revised on May 22nd, 2023. Find that the change recommended provide clarity. Let's read that part and requirements for parking lot design and ensure public safety. There's a motion to approve the uh, amendment change. Is there a second? Second. Second by Dave. Any other further discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay. New business. We have PZ 2023 16, 10 Prospect Hill Terrace, two storage site plan modification, proposing 24 hour drive up storage units for 24,000 square feet within the existing parking lot and site improvements. The applicant is uh, True Storage and Josh Sullivan. Who's here to speak on their behalf? Uh, this is Jason Wiemann, uh from the Beta Group. Can you hear me and see me on the screen? Yes, we can, sir. You can. Excellent. Um, great. So I'll be uh, I'll be introducing uh, the project. I also have with me today Josh Sullivan from True Storage to assist with any questions that you might have on the application itself. Um, so what I'd like to do really quick is just give a little bit of a background of of where we are, how the project has come to uh, to be as of today. So exactly a year ago, we had come in front of the commission for um, a site plan application to convert the former Burlington Coat Factory at 10 Prospect Hill Terrace um, into an indoor climate controlled uh, storage facility. Um, so that, that application has been approved. Um, the ownership has been turned over from Burlington Coat Factory to True Storage late 2022. Um, and the construction had moved forward during that time. And I believe at the start of this year, um, they are done construction and they had started operation for the building conversion itself. So this application is a site plan modification to that same site. Um, what I'll do is I'll share my screen just to give you a little background of where the site is. If I can do that, just give me one second. All right, can you see my screen? 
Yes, sir. All right. So this is a Google image of where the site is. So the, the parcel actually um, straddles the, the town line with Enfield and East Windsor. The site is located between 91 and Route 5, just north of Route 140. Um, you can see it on the screen here. Oops, sorry about that. So this is approximately, the site itself is approximately a little over 10 acres in total. Uh, the portion of the site that's within East Windsor is 5.7 acres. Uh, on the south side of the image here. Um, so as of today, just as a review, the building itself has been renovated. There had been some minor modifications done to the parking lot. Those improvements include um, some mill and overlay of the existing pavement, as well as some parking lot striping uh, for ADA improvements, as well as um, a new water line installed at the back of the building to satisfy, satisfy uh, the fire marshal's comments. Um, so what I'd like to present now is um, what we are intending or what we're calling basically phase two, uh, which is basically uh, proposing uh, drive up storage units um, within the existing parking lot um, on the East Windsor parcel. So what you see on the screen is, a, is our title sheet of the plans that we had submitted to the PNC department. Um, below, you'll see some of the images prior to, um, to storage owning the Burlington Coat Factory. Um, it, it's a lot of deteriorated pavement, um, uh, which has changed since uh, they had acquired the site. Like I said, it has been milled and overlaid and, and striped. The image at the top shows some of the 3D renderings of what the on-site storage buildings will look like. Um, uh, I believe there's approximately 100 and 16 to 18 units being proposed on the site. Um, a lot, and they're all single story drive up. They are not climate controlled. Uh, they have overhead doors, roll up doors. Uh, and they also have um, lighting on, on the external uh, faces of the buildings. Um, and I'll get into the details in, uh, in just a second. So I'd like to move on to the site plan itself, which may or may not be easy to see on your end. Um, and I'll zoom in a bit. Um, so as I mentioned before, we're proposing 112 um, 10 by 20 units. In addition to that, we have four smaller units that are about 10 by 15 in size. Again, these are all located within the East Windsor parcel of the site. Uh, most of this, most of the units are, are proposed on the west side of the building. Uh, we are not proposing any improvements at the rear of the building or the side of the building, nor are we proposing any improvements on the Enfield parcel um, of, of the site itself. So you'll notice that um, all of the storage units on the site are proposed within the existing um, impervious uh, areas of the parking lot. So these were paved areas that have been um, either modified or or um, or change to accommodate uh, several rows of drive up storage units. So we, as you can see at the bottom of the screen, we have uh, several drive aisles in between these units. So we have uh, basically four drive aisles um, for the cluster that's at the main entrance. We also have some supplemental units at the west side of the building, um, another 15 units um, over there as well. So with these improvements, um, we did have to consider modifying some of the drainage system um, on site only because uh, several of the existing drainage pipes on the site were located underneath some of the proposed buildings. So again, we were going to go ahead and relocate those structures, relocate those pipes within the drive aisles to properly convey the stormwater um, on site. While I'm talking about stormwater, um, while we're talking about you know peak flows and stormwater uh, improvements, we actually have a reduction of impervious area on the site. I believe um, it's close to uh, 8,000 to 9,000 square feet that'll be converted that was impervious to some sort of pervious surface. That being either something that's landscaped or vegetated. Um, now that we're talking about that, you'll notice that not that you can see some areas of the site that were, have not been utilized for drive up storage units. Uh, the reason for that is that we do have two existing waterline easements that 
that extend from Prospect Hill Terrace to the building. One of them is diagonally on the the southeast. I mean, the, yeah, the south the southeast corner of the site. The other one is on the eastern side of the site, adjacent to the um, the smaller units that are, are proposed on the eastern side of the existing building. Um, those are the locations we could not propose building on buildings on top of. These are also areas that we did not introduce any um, large amounts of landscaping in the form of either large trees or roots or something that would either encroach to, into or impede upon the existing water line that, that is existing on site today. Um, so with that, that's, that's pretty much it um, as, a, as an overview. I know that we had originally submitted the site plan application on May 2nd. Um, that application did um, go under review um, from, for, your com for, for your commission. We did receive comments last week on some of these issues, which we have addressed and reissued site plans to you. Uh, I believe digitally we had submitted them yesterday and then you should have received hard copies today, which is what I'm presenting on, this, on the screen in front of you today. Um, I can pause for a second to, to, to take any comments or uh, we could jump into how we anticipate on addressing the comments that we have received from the Planning and Zoning Commission. I'd say uh, go ahead and address the comments and then we'll have questions after. Sure, so I'll jump into that now. Excellent, so up on my screen, this is, these are the comments that we have received. I'll go through them pretty quickly. So from the Inland Wetlands Commission, um, this was reviewed. Uh, they, uh, the commission, uh, the Inland Wetlands Commission did not have any comments as um, you know, the 150 foot upland review area um, was not within any of our proposed improvements. So we did not receive any comments from that. So there's no action there. There was a comment on the front yard setback from Prospect Hill Terrace. Um, originally on our plan, we had a 20 foot side yard um, setback from Prospect Hill from the cul-de-sac. That has since been revised to be 60 feet and not 20 feet. So that impacted a couple of the units. Uh, we had removed, I believe, six to eight units to comply with the buildings not being within that 60 foot offset. So we actually have a little bit of a reduction in the amount of square footage that we're proposing for this project. Rather than being 24,000 square feet, I believe we're at 22,000 and 400 square feet to accommodate for the removal of those of those couple units. Photometrics plan. Um, this was a comment that we had received. Um, I am under the under um, yeah, under the impression that this is currently being worked on. I know um, Josh Sullivan is on the phone or on the call with us today. He can elaborate a little bit more on the progress of that plan and when he thinks that that might be uh, submitted. Josh, are you there? Yep, I'm here. Thanks, Jason. Um, as you mentioned, we are working on the photometric um, plan as we speak. For the most part, we are utilizing the existing lighting that's on site. Um, we are upgrading and replacing, as we discussed in the first round, from the interior you know, fit up um, to make them more efficient in LED. But in terms of new proposed lighting for this phase two, the only thing that is being proposed, which again, we'll show on the photometric, are downward facing wall pack lighting. Um, yeah, if you see that first rendering, you can see them there above the doors. Um, so they have a, a screen on the top. They are completely downward facing and, you know, put off very little light that can be leaked um, beyond the parcel. And, you know, we have a good amount of coverage there. So we will send a photometric plan as soon as it's ready. Should be just a few more days. Um, I don't expect it'll uh, yield you know, any opinions that'll change anything, but we'll, we'll provide staff with that so they can review and make sure it's compliant with, with the code. Excellent. Josh, while I still have you, some of these other comments relate to some of the architectural elements of the building. You might just wanna to touch upon the comment that we received for the roof uh, color, as well as the facade for some of those buildings. Yep. So um, we we went ahead and, and, and adjusted those, you know, to to comply with, with the comment made. Um, the reason we do have some of the doors on on the end is is for access as well as aesthetic, so people can see there for storage. Um, but all of the adjustments should be compliant with, with the comments made. 
And that also includes the stormwater comment made about reducing the temperature of the stormwater runoff generated by the proposed buildings. I believe originally we had proposed probably a dark color or something black or similar. Um, so that has since been changed to a white color to um, appease this comment. And then lastly, it was a landscaping uh, comment, which is in accordance with section 600.1. Um, so we have been asked to include either landscaping and plantings on portions of the site that are not going to be covered by impervious area. Um, these include um, spaces in between buildings um, five and six and seven. Um, so we have a, a landscape architect that took a look at producing a landscaping plan. Uh, we did look at all of the opportunities that we could to introduce um, any kind of landscaping that was, um, you know, aesthetically pleasing, but cost effective. Um, <clears throat> and as I mentioned before, we did not want to introduce any landscaping elements such as shrubs, trees, evergreens, anything with a hard root system that could potentially impact the existing water lines on the site. So you'll notice that the areas between, you know, buildings five and six and to the north where the water line easement is, that we are proposing turf in those areas. So it will be grass, it's not gonna be pavement. Um, so those will be maintained um, as grass. Um, but the areas that we had focused on that would include landscaping was in the front of the first aisle, as well as uh, at the southeast corner of the parcel where we're removing some bituminous pavement for parking that we don't know, that we no longer need. And we're doing some grading there. And then we also took the opportunity to introduce um, some smaller shrubs and trees and mulch um, on the eastern portion of the of the site um, in the location where we're proposing uh, the 15 storage units. So those are the three opportunities that we thought was uh, the best areas to go ahead and introduce plants uh, and mulch uh, for aesthetic reasons, as well as uh, making sure that people don't drive over those areas in the wintertime um, and they um, adhere to the, the curbing that's been laid out on the site. So I believe those were the only comments that we had received. So the only outstanding comment that we have is, is the photometrics plan, which um, True Storage is working on. Um, as far as everything else, I believe that we've addressed everything that um, had been a concern from the commission itself. As the uh, fire department's question that is answered about the turning radius of 26 feet, Oh yeah, so there we we did receive another comment about the the turning radius, uh, specifically this maneuver on the southeast corner of the site. I believe originally when we submitted the application, the, that radii was close, but it was uh, slightly smaller at 22 feet. I believe the request was that that radii be modified to be 26 feet. Um, so even though it's not labeled here, this radii does in fact meet the 26 foot radii requirement from the fire module. Are you ready for questions now or you have more of your presentation? Um, I don't have anything else to add unless somebody else has any specific questions regarding, you know, the site or, or the buildings themselves. Okay. All right, Jim, we'll start with you. Um, since this is gonna be open to the public, is there going to be a gate on the entrance way coming in? Or anybody just drive in there? Josh, I believe this site is going to be open. What is it 24 hours, the facility? No, it is not 24 hours. So uh, we are not proposing a gate for that reason. Um, you know, it's they are completely secured buildings other than, than the customer. And we have vast amounts of security on site. Due to the nature of just being storage, um, we kind of go above and beyond and place interior and exterior cameras at every corner we can. Um, so it is a, a monitored site with restricted hours. So people can't come here late at night, middle of the night, early morning, nothing like that. Well, they, they probably will. Um, most of these storage facility places have a gate um, just so they and a code so they know who comes and who goes. I mean, I know there's a couple of uh, storage facilities that have been hit recently when they busted like 40 locks or 50 locks and, and ransacked the place. So I, I we, go ahead. Oh, sorry, I was just gonna say, if that's the, the will of the, the board and you guys would like us to add that, we're open to that. We have done that other um, jurisdictions where it's a requirement. Um, 
we typically don't prefer it, but of course, if, if that's your concern and, and would like us to add it, we can, we can do that. Well, well you're, you're stating that you're not gonna be open 24 hours, but especially with the outside storage areas, if you don't have any kind of physical barriers, what's gonna prevent people from going to these units at any hour of the night? Yeah. Right, there is no physical barrier. So theoretically one, one could, as even though it's not allowed, but correct. So again, if it's, if it's your will, we'd be happy to add that for security reasons. And also, you said the, the color units are going to be white. Is that what you said for the outside ones? Or the no? roof, I believe, right? And the outside? Correct. Yeah. It's more of a, a gray on the roof, but correct. Yep. Go to the last page. And I just want to let you know, I, I did actually tour your facility inside, and it's absolutely beautiful. The way you guys did, everything came out really, really nice. Thank you. We we appreciate that. We we do a go above and beyond with you know that vinyl plank flooring, which I'm sure you noticed little things that like that that you might not see at other facilities. But we try to keep it as as top of the line as we can. Yeah, you stripped out the whole building, and I noticed you guys did a lot of other stuff inside, like the wood flooring, like you said, and uh, the lighting was nice. It was all all motion light censored and came out really good. Thank you. Appreciate that. Dave, do you have any questions? I don't. No. no. Yeah. Um, okay, I have just a couple of questions. Um, the grass area that you propose between the buildings, um, do you think the curb that you have in your details will be adequate to prevent people from parking on top of it? Because somebody's coming to their storage unit, they may have a tendency, rather than being in the drive aisle, to pull up onto the lawn. Yeah, the thing right. is, is that, well, I mean, I, what I would say first is that there are other opportunities on the site for people to park. Um, if you'll notice down down in the south corner of the building, there are parking spaces down here. There are also parking spaces, existing parking spaces along the the um, the wet, uh, the east side of 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 the uh, the units, as well as all along the front of the building. You know, I was told that, you know, there's very few or minimum traffic that comes through here uh, per hour. So, you know, we believe that there's enough peripheral parking that people can utilize rather than parking up onto the grass. Most people will park pretty much right in front of their unit temporarily to go ahead and unload. Um, that's the reason why we're providing 24 foot wide drive aisles. So you at least have the opportunity to pass a vehicle if you do have someone stopped who happens to be unloading. Um, I don't know if there's been any history with people parking or driving up on top of the two minutes curbs in order to unload, um, but I'll let Josh speak to that. That's a, <clears throat> Thank you, Jason. And, and that's exactly what I was gonna mention. I was trying to think of our, our closest facility. Um, we had one in Bourne, Massachusetts, um, very similar situation, a, a converted former stop and shop existing structure with a large parking lot that we did drive up buildings. Um, as well, and it had the, the same curbing, and it was never an issue for us. Like Jason said, the vehicular traffic here is very, very low. So, you know, for three or four people with units next to each other to all be there at the same time and force someone up at the curb just would never happen. Um, typically, they'll, they'll pull right out front, unload their stuff, and, you know, be on their way or park in a nearby spot. Thank you. What about the snow removal? Where are you going to push all the snow to? Well, the snow. Well, I don't know how the how the site is maintained right now, but there. So the site itself is it's almost three quarters impervious area. I know from what I've seen in the past. I know that there's been a lot of um, like bituminous accumulation at the rear of the building. So the site pretty much drains from east to west to Bowen's Brook on the west hand side. I have seen a bunch of it almost looks like deteriorate, deteriorated pavement or rings of salt and sediment in the back. I would have to assume that any snow removal that occurs on site would not be piled between the drive aisles. I would, I would think that it would be pretty much moved to the rear of the building where people are not parking. Um, and then it still has the opportunity to, you know, uh, you know, melt and drain into the uh, the existing drainage system, which I believe is what they do today. Yes, if I'm that's, not mistaken. Right, that's my understanding of what ap what occurred this past winter, and that would be our plan to continue that at the rear of the site where there's no parking or activity. 
Okay. And the, the last question I have is your inside storage is pretty much active now or will be active at the time of construction. Um, you're going to have to block off access to this area while it's under construction. Will you have adequate access for people to still gain their inside storage areas? Yep. Yep, absolutely. You know, that's a paramount concern of ours. You know, we don't want to hamstring our own customers either. Um, so we will be maintaining all of the dedicated parking um, for existing customers in the existing structure to be able to enter and exit out of all existing egresses and parking areas. That won't be affected. Okay. That's all I have. Uh, anyone on staff have any questions that they would like to ask? To me, they, they did a good job addressing the problems that we had. We're still waiting on the photometric plan. I can share that I did speak with the town planner of Enfield today, and she said that the town of Enfield will not be commenting on the application. Oh. All right. If nobody has anything else, um, with the absence of the photometric Plan, we're going to have to then continue this uh, application. So uh, I'll entertain a motion to uh, continue the, the hearing until uh, in our next meeting. I make a motion to continue EZ 2023-16, 10 Profit Hill Terrace, three storage site and modification, closing 24 hour driver storage unit, 24,000 square feet. Within the existing parking lot and site improvements, applicant two storage last drop salt. There's a motion to continue this application. Move for a second. Second. Second by Dave. Any other discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Unanimous. We continue to our next meeting. Okay, other business, we are going to address the added agenda item first. That is Mr. James Giorgio has a request on a waiver of fee in lieu of sidewalks for a subdivision on 137 Stanford Road. Okay. Yeah. I don't have any easel, so we'll try to. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. See that, right? yeah. They all have the email with the pictures, too. Oh, okay, good. Because I, I actually brought. Uh, Thank you. So I'm not here to discuss, you know, the definition of fee in lieu of. I, I understand the concept as a builder of over 25 years. <laughs> and what it's intended for. Um, other times that I've actually used the option was in other towns. I've never had to really do it here in East Windsor, even though I've built over close to 100 homes here in town. Um, oh, first of all, my name is James Giorgio, 40 Barber Hill Road for the record, Broadbrook. Um, so when we initially came, uh, came in front of the commission, <clears throat> I used the fee in lieu of, you know, as a, as a sort of an option, but does it make sense to put sidewalks in? If it doesn't, you know, what is the option that we have? And in other towns, it's always been, you know, a small fee, $1,500, $2,000 a lot, you know, from just talking about it. Um, and I thought that would be similar here. I didn't even expect that when we were approved for the fee in lieu of, and we went and did the calculation, Len Morton made the calculation, the fee came to 
which as a builder, you usually say, well, hell, I'll just put the sidewalk in. But it still doesn't make sense to put the sidewalk at that time. <clears throat> so we started looking at it. I spoke to the roof immediately. I spoke to land. And they said, well, you know, evaluate it, come back in front of the commission, you know, maybe ask for reduction, whatever it is. And, and the town's calculation is simple. It's linear feet times four feet wide times $17 a square foot. Um, I've been out of town, like I said, where they'll use a similar calculation, but then they'll they'll take 10% of it, 20% of it, 30%. Every town's different. There's no mandate on how it's done. As I stated earlier, most of the times I thought it's just normally a flat feet. Because it's not intended to be more than what it would cost to build the site. And in this case, we happen to have, when we did the approval, we got the approval, there's 954 feet here. All right. This has actually been chopped off a little bit because this is now a rear lot. So we didn't need this for funding or something like that. But over the course of the, of the next few months, meeting with land out there during rainstorms, and etc. If you're not familiar with this, there's a swale that comes all the way down and stops pretty much here where there's a residence. There's, a, there's a two houses here, and then another hay field, and then another house. So it's the swale doesn't necessarily disappear, but the road still slopes into the property, and then it goes upward, and the water sort of just settles there until it gets warm. In this case, the water comes down. And actually hits this farm road that was that's still there. And so the water comes down and it hits here and doesn't go anywhere else. It literally just backs up. I thought that owner, sorry, to cut you off. I thought that owner put a, a pipe in. We did. Yeah. Well, that was you guys. That was us right here. No, no, there's one down here. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, there's one down well, the there house with the back. There's not one here, and this is all wetlands in here. So what happens is the water backs up. If you look at the site picture I showed you, which is looking north, yeah. you can see all the water back here. Okay, this water actually comes all the way back into here. And it sits there because it can't get through farmland. Now, even if we so we talked to Len, we're like, listen, why don't we just put a pipe through the farm? The problem with that is that the flow line right now for the swale is about three feet down. From this farm road on, this topography stays the same. It's flat. So the water comes here, it just sort of sits, and then it absorbs over time, meaning a week or two or three. Um, and it really depends on the soil condition. These winds are loaded with clay. So water with clay tends to go up and down, not side to side. So the water sits here. So when, when the approvals came in, I even talked because Joe had raised the issue about, well, why don't we put a pipe in and cover the whole thing up, put this whole swale up, put a pipe in, and still drain the water down here. That would require numerous storm drains to be put in all on the side of the road. So you're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars for storm drainage, etc. The problem you still have is the storm drain pipes would be lower than where the water needs to go. So the water doesn't flow uphill. The water's got to get to the wetlands. So without doing any major wetlands remediation here, like creating a whole like tension pond, this water is going nowhere, only via absorption. Now, the problem with that is that, so the option of fee and lua is you either build a sidewalk where you pay a fee. Well, I can't build a sidewalk here at all, so I don't have the option. And the reason for that is the swale, when you look at the, when you go down that road, the, the crown of the road dumps right to the edge of the road and then continues down probably another, I'm going to say five to 10 feet of distance. So when you build a town standard sidewalk, you usually have a four or five foot snow shelf, you have a four foot sidewalk, and then another four or five feet to the right away. So that whole 15 feet or so is your right away. The sidewalk in the snow shelf always tilts towards the curve and it runs along the road. That's where the stuff drains off. In this case, Len needs to keep that slope. So, <coughs> because if we close that in, 
all this water that comes from Woolham Road all the way down is going to end up in the residence down here. And it's a lot of water. So <clears throat> the problem we have in talking with Ruth and Glenn is that we cannot build a sidewalk with the town stand. It would have to be either on a slope or it would be below water most of the time, which will deteriorate and then just cause more maintenance issues for the town. Excuse me, for the town. The other option was to put the sidewalk further in. Well, then it's not a town sidewalk, it's a walking path from the property. So that's not even an option. So I stand here just trying to apply common sense that I understand the whole concept of Ian Lua. I'm a supporter of it. But in this case, $65,000 is all right. Even if you shrink it down and still use the same formula, you're at like 30 or 40,000. So I still can build a sidewalk for less than that. And for me to put a sidewalk in just makes no sense anyway. If I could, it's built an the entire Scantic Road and no sidewalk. There's no plan on putting a sidewalk in here. It's not going to connect anywhere. So taking that, taking in the safety issues of building one that would be crooked, would not meet town standards, would be below water most of the time, every time it rains, or snows and melts. And the fact that the town doesn't calculate it just on a flat fee, it's all done on the mathematical equation, it just doesn't make sense. So we're asking because we cannot, we don't have an option to do a sidewalk, the only option we have is to pay a fee, which is exorbitant. So we're asking to waive the sidewalk and the fee requirement for these three particular lots because it's just getting done. Right? <laughs> so, so I've been here a while. We never waited. And I understand that. I mean, if it makes the commission, I mean, I was under the impression in all seriousness. Uh, so, I, we, well, the fifteen hundred. So, so looking at the proposal, we, we so, all knew that you weren't going to sign. Yeah. We, so I mean, we all know the road. We all know yeah. the swamp. In the front, it's yeah. wet, it's very wet. So we just figured you were going to pay the fee. How do you guys calculate that fee? Is the price per square foot higher right now? I'm sure, it is. Well, it is, but like I know I can put, well, for instance, this sidewalk right here, 40 feet. So right now, this house is pretty much done, and we're looking for a certificate of occupancy within the next 30 days. And that's why we're here anyway, because Ruth's like, listen, we need to resolve it. And we were just sort of waiting for. You know, a lot of different rainstorms that happened. We needed to see where the water was. And trust me, one night it came out there were multiple four rainstorms. So this here, if you do the calculation of 40 feet, all right. I mean, this is this is and this is the truth. I'm not I've been doing this 25 minutes. Yeah, I believe it. So they could reduce it. 25 uh, actually not a lot. So 40 feet times four feet wide is 160 square feet times $17 a square foot. Is $2,700. Now, I really could put that sidewalk 40 feet for probably about 1500 So, why would I spend the $2,700? Because I have my own job. It's not even, it's like three yards of concrete space at $150 a year. So, it's nothing for us to do. But it makes no sense. So, now that's $2,720. Now, like I said, when I initially, and even with my engineer, he did rest, he does a lot of stuff. So things are all over the place. It's usually a flat fee. So I'm not here saying I don't want to pay anywhere. But so I really thought when we waived it, it would be like, all right, I guess it would be a lot. It's three lots, it's $4,500. I'm thinking paying people for COs. I'm still willing to do a flat fee because I believe in the program. I do. So I walk some town, do your pair. No one's needs to be put in place at times. But I certainly can build these lots. If they want and I would normally do that. I'd say, well, sure, mean, it's like, well, even though they make no sense, they want to go, so go you anything. Put them in at all. So in this case, I don't have the option to be go below it's just a fee. So I'm not looking out. Like I said, so you want to mandate a flat fee? I'm not objecting. So yeah, if, object if, if we did any kind of fee reduction, it wouldn't come from us. It'd have to come from Lenny. Correct or no? The way the, the, um, the calculation. This is what the condition that went into the approval says. Um, 
A fee in lieu of installation of sidewalk shall be provided. The final amount shall be in accordance with section 6.35 and approved by the town engineer. So 6.35 says uh, fee in lieu of installation. Alternatively, the applicant may propose and the commission may accept that some or all of this requirement be met by making a payment of a fee in lieu of installing sidewalks or trails to a town sidewalk and trail fund provided that such payment is at least 40% of the estimated cost of installing sidewalks in the development. 47 quarter, 26,000. For me to do that, probably in all seriousness. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that's why I'm saying, you know. Well, so. I, what, what, no, it's going to be like $50 a lot. It, it, you know, know, that means when you're bought, I'm not saying you, but when a lot of purchase, I'm sure that's a consideration that was just always wet in front. That wasn't even my concern. I figured that doing the, um, before we put that driveway in, we knew we were blocking it. So by putting a pipe in, I figured the water would run still. But we've discovered that the water doesn't run. It just runs so out the of the dirt road and it stops. So now there's no, in theory, like I said, if I put those in, that, this past week, no, those sidewalks would have been probably going for 60, I'll say it's but, And I agree, I, mean, I agree, you know, but I mean, we're at the whole point is that that's why Lenny got to install the and all that. Yeah. And Lenny's no, position, no. I'm not talking out of line. We, we, we need something on paper. Nothing should be done as far as sidewalks, change the soil, it's got to collect water. So we'll manage the water to stay here somehow. And, and, and we can talk the roof further about maybe doing something within the town to get that water to move into the wetlands where it needs to go. Well, you're talking wetlands approval, you're talking it's larger than what's allowed, you're right about state review. You know, I don't know. We'll be talking what's feasible, right? Like, yeah. Does it make any sense? Right. Maybe not. <laughs> No, no. Yeah. Everything ends up being below where it already is. Yeah. This driveway across is no problem because we can put a, a pipe underneath it so the water is true. But the water still stays there until it's warm. But the water's all gone. The water's all gone along here, but in this particular lot, it's still sort of sitting there with lots of. When they treat this place years ago, pop over tree, they just created lots of, you know, runnels and holes and everything. So the water just sort of sits on it. The minute I clear this and smooth it all out, the water's going to actually flow a lot quicker, which means I'm not sure where it's going to go. So that's part of my concern. I'm not even sure I want to build it upstairs because I see what it does with the restriction. For me to build a house and you know, here you go, people have a house. That's not really because that's the first rain spot here. Well, my opinion is I think the next discussion has to be with Lenny. And to validate what you said, under normal construction circumstances, the, the cost of construction should be this amount of money, and then we can apply the 40% to that number versus you know. With your, you know, outstanding yeah. circumstances, the cost of construction is much higher, it's huge, and, and that's why the, the I mean, even this calculation of sixty-five thousand, believe it or not, it might cost more than that by the time you deal with all the drainage and oh, figure yeah. out how to put everything in, and still you end up with a sidewalk that can help you. You know, and I know you hear this argument all the time. I'm not here to say it's it's. I'm, I'm not here to say I don't want to face anything, but just the way the fee is right now is. We also have to tread lightly and do one for all. Well, that's that's why I think yeah. we kind of relies on our town engineer to say, okay, this is you know, you know what you call you know exceptional circumstances where you know, okay, there is no such thing as unbuildable. We can get the Army Corps of Engineers in here and we can build something for you know two point three million dollars. We can have the, yeah. the golden yeah. sidewalk, but yeah. yes. but is that is that you know feasible? So I would hope that Lenny could give us a number to say, okay. This was flat level ground on sand, you know, form it and go. 
what it should cost to put a sidewalk in. And then we can apply the 40% the rule and, and there's your number. We don't put that out of business. Well, I was listening to before you guys, oh, it's not a hardship to say, well, this is, this is extreme. It's like, yeah, you got to pass that on to each building line. So you're talking 65 grand, all of a sudden you have 20 plus thousand dollars every house. And, you know, there's price limits and cost limits. So one of that whole situation too. So, all right. So that's that's our recommendation is that it goes back of, of what Lenny what whatever you can deems okay. to be the what under normal circumstances what the construction costs would be. Now does that mean does we have to train them authority to make that decision or do I need to come back in here and have you guys understand what it is? It's, it's, it sounds like that. that path is compliant with the condition of approval. Yeah, right. Yeah. Lenny. Administrator. So just like so administrator. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Three of us. We don't usually get this. At all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I don't know. <laughs> what it is, you know. But, all right, thank you. Right. It's, it's not the time. Mm -hmm. So the next item we have is our. CEO report. So Danielle has um, put together an update and she gave a little key at the bottom for her color coding. <laughs> <laughs> um, she's gonna get rid of the red. Really that on hold was waiting for the uh, flight ordinance. So, um, and that's coming up for town meeting in June. We have a date now? Uh, I think I'd kind of be guessing. It's in the teens. You know, stay tuned. <laughs> It'll be noticed. But the blight ordinance is posted now on the website so folks can um, look, at it, review look it. at it and review it prior to. Um, it's either the 15th or the 17th. Do you know? Town meeting, June, is it 15? 17? Ah. -ah. <laughs> Can't remember that far out. All right. Um, 15. 15. June 15th. Very late. I'm surprised at that. So there's June some that have been on hold for a while. Danielle has gotten really great compliance with the um, car sweep oh, good. that she did. We have a couple of outstanding locations that um, uh, have citations and fines building up, and we do now have a uh, appointed Angelo Saravino. He um, is the hearing officer that's been appointed. And so there'll be some um, citation hearings happening on a couple of properties. So the pink. The pink. That was gonna be hopefully addressed by Blight and Wilma. What are the recourse, what are the action steps anybody can take for any of this stuff? Nothing. A private matter, you know. We've been working on getting a tool, and so we have we have flight ordinance going at town meeting. Hopefully, it'll pass. Um, the current draft is from, uh, the focus and purpose has shifted to public safety and uh, accommodating emergency response and um, inspections and the like. Uh, but when reports come in or complaints come in, uh, we'll, we'll investigate and then if there's it's probably gonna be more on the board of health building side of things or board of health and yeah you got three with tall grass tall <laughs> grass isn't gonna <laughs> cut it so yeah so the increase <laughs> in vermin and anything else that grows yeah. Yeah. That's, in the yeah. that's, that's right and that's the kind of advice that um, danielle is giving folks when they call you say you need vermin <laughs> here's the number of the health department so um that's good. Yeah, it's going well. Okay. So under correspondence, yeah. we have a letter. Yep, we had received an initial letter of an intent to file for 31 um, Thrall Road. And uh, just so folks know, 
I had sent our the resolution that you came up with to the siding council in relation to the Thoral Road petition. So they have that, the siding council will, will have that. And since then, um, from citizens uh, that are concerned with solar, um, there have been a couple other petitions for a public hearing uh, on this application that have been um, submitted. So all of those have been acknowledged by the siding council and um, will be reviewed and they'll determine whether or not they'll have a public hearing. So they're not obligated to hold them if they don't. I think decide. they have to act on whether they will or not. But it seems like the volume of correspondence hitting them has to be palpable at this point because I think There'll be more heading that way. So, yeah. so, so and then when, I have, they're, when they're going to be rendering their decision on that, do you know? Oh, they're just starting, so I don't know uh, when, but I have the full petition. If folks want to look through it. Um, they do, It is online, too, at the Siding Council website. But if you're interested in seeing the <laughs> Mm -hmm. Well, at least, uh, I mean, hopefully, well, if we get a hearing, at least we I can publicly voice our uh, concerns. You know, I think it's the, the cumulative impact and just bringing that to the forefront as they're um, selecting locations. Mm -hmm. Important. Yes. Yeah. What, I can't remember what's the number, but I mean, we have got a, you know, majority of the proposed sites in for the state, don't we? It's the total percentage of we yeah. build everything that's under under plan. Yeah. Our message is we've done our part. Well, that's I yeah. think. I think you know. I think that well, number was upwards of over thirty over thirty percent total in the state yeah. for one town to to shoulder all that. Yep, so there's, there's, uh, there's not cry happening at this point. So I think we've got their attention. State. Okay, okay. More, to, more to come. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have anything for business meeting? No. And uh, no need for an executive session. So, anybody have anything else they'd like to uh, bring up? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I make the motion to adjourn. There's a motion to adjourn on the table. Do we have a second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Meeting is adjourned at 738.